Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, thanks for all the fish. My Kiss is a 7.5% IPA from Black Rocks Brewery in Marquette, Michigan. Considering they're all the way up in the UP, Black Rocks has a really large presence here in the Lower Peninsula, and it seems like while they like to call these year-round releases, when their beers show up on shelves, they really show up, and when it rains, it pours. Now, I've got experience with their 51K IPA, I've enjoyed their Presque Ale, and without getting too hyped, I'm hoping to be equally impressed with my kiss here today. So rather than waste any more time talking about this, I'm gonna take a look at the label, I'll get it into a glass. Fun fact, rainbow trout can jump up to five times the length of their bodies. And I'm gonna grab my IPA glass, we'll take a look at the label of the can here. Uh, this says, Native brewed in Marquette, Michigan. We're jumping right in. It's got a black, uh, black on the top, black on the bottom. A lot of Black Rocks beers or uh, a lot of their labels look like this. It has the Black Rocks logo, which is a sun coming. I would, I'm going to say coming up behind a mountain, but it could be going down behind a mountain. And it says My Kiss IPA, and you'll notice a rainbow trout at the bottom. My Kiss is a Latin name for rainbow trout, and this, the the coloration on this can itself. If you, at first glance, you could look at it and think, oh, okay, maybe it's watermelon. You know, it has like a yellow to a pink to down to a green kind of coloration, but that is like the reflection of the scales of a rainbow trout. And on the side, it says a well-hopped, bright, bold, succulent American IPA. And then it says, we love beer, you love beer. Let's get together, brewed and canned in Marquette, Michigan. And this one tells you keep it fresh, buy within four months of date on the bottom. And there isn't anything else besides a government warning, but let's look at what that date on the bottom is, shall we? It says Bird Law, packaged on 6-10-2019. Right now it is June 23rd, well, the date that I'm recording this, so this is well within the four months that it says to, to drink it by the bottom of the can date. And uh, let's go ahead and crack it open, get it into a glass, shall we? So... Cracking this one, I'm gonna put it, get a nose out of the, out of the can. And some people have asked, why do you smell it directly out of the can? I like to get the aroma that's in the can. I like to get the aroma in the glass. I like sometimes they're very different. Sometimes they're, you know, I can obviously smell a lot better in the can, in the glass. And sometimes I, I get different smells, but also I, I can't smell that great. So sometimes I kind of have to do this as a backup, but let's put the note, the get, get a nose on the can here. It smells really hoppy. Uh, you can smell kind of the malt characteristics in there as well but it smells very hoppy. It's got a kind of uh, earthy aroma to it, earthy hoppiness. Let's go ahead and pour this. And it's coming kind of a darker yellow, borderline brown out of the can. And in the glass, it's collecting a little bit more orange. I'm gonna let that spill over because I went a little aggressive on it, but that's okay. You know, this is a countertop, we can wipe that up. But it's got a massive head. This glass is an IPA glass, it is it's supposed to create these ridges on here create a lot of head, a lot of aromatics. You get a lot out of the out of the glass here. I'm gonna have a nice puddle here on my counter. And we're gonna just take a look at the at the at the coloration here. Very uh almost orangey, orangey, almost amber. That's how dark of a orange this is. And it's really clear. I can see from here the bubbles on the head on this. Obviously, I got a huge head. I got three, at least three fingers of head on this. Really tight, super compact bubbles. You can see it from the top. If you could see a close-up of the side of the kind of cross section that I can see here, you can see these are really compact bubbles. There's a little bit of larger ones here too, but but mostly this is uh, really super compact. You can see from the top, definitely a lot of compact bubbles. And holding it up, there is some sediment floating in there. It's not totally transparent, but it's not hazy. This is, has a really nice, clear quality to it. There's a little bit of uh, particulate floating in suspension here in the glass. I don't see a whole lot of carbonation. I see a few bubbles here here and there kind of popping up. Let's get a better nose here out of the glass. Yeah, I'm getting, I got more of an earthy smell. See, that's why I drink it, or I smell it out of the can too. I'm getting, I got an earthy smell out of the out of the can itself, but I'm not getting that out of the glass. I'm getting more of a sweet kind of floral aroma. Getting a bit of, um, I'm gonna say borderline citrusy kind of hoppiness to it but earthy in there as well, and it smells sweet. It has a, a malt sweetness to it and an earthy kind of, I'm sorry, not an earthy, but a floral kind of hoppiness and a little bit of a citrus. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Cheers. Mm. 
very sweet. It's got a really sweet upfront mouthfeel. I'm sorry, really sweet upfront flavor. Mouthfeel is really nice, kind of middle of the road mouthfeel, not too light, not too heavy, not medium. It's just maybe borderline. It's just a hair under medium, a shade under medium, not much. But yeah, a lot of malt kind of sweetness up front. I'm getting this, um, I'm getting a bitterness. It's it's a bit citrus, like a zesty, bitter, uh, uh, citrusy hoppiness. Can't even talk. But there's a bit of a floral note in there as well. A lot of floral on the tail end. A lot of the, um, a lot of the aftertaste is kind of floral as well. Really refreshing though. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a higher ABV than I would have expected. Uh, I believe it's, okay, if you saw, saw a cut there, I took a really quick jump back at my at my fact sheet, 7.5%. I don't taste a lot of booziness on this. It's very, very dangerous in that respect. It's a very different tasting IPA. I can tell you though, that for me personally, my experience, this it's very sweet up front. It's got that really strong floral characteristic, the bitterness on the tail end, a little bit of a citrus bitterness. For me, I would like to drink it. I'm, I'm not drinking it super cold. I think I would like to drink it a little bit colder. I'd like for the floralness to be cut a little bit. I think it's a really good beer and I think it's at 7.5%, you can't beat it. But I think for my tastes, it would be hard for me to drink multiple of these, you know, sit down. I know there's times where I buy a six pack of something or a four pack, whatever's available, go to a family, you know, go to a family event or go to a friend's place and drink, you know, a few of them. I'm not, I don't usually just drink one beer and that's it, but I'll drink maybe three, you know, two, three, four. And I would think after the, after probably two of these, I'd want to switch it up just because that floral taste is very, it's very refreshing up front. But I think over time, For me, I think it's just something I'd want to switch up after a while, but it's a really nice light 7.5%, very nice and light for 7.5%, a really nice light IPA at that ABV. Um, I don't know if I'd call this one like a lawnmower beer. I don't think after I'm done finishing, you know, doing yard work or mowing the lawn or doing something like that, I'd want to dive into one of these. This might be more of a kind of, you know, top the night off kind of beer, maybe start the night off. But again, I don't know if I'd want to go more than maybe two at a time into this. I think I'd want to switch it up just because I think that that, that floral quality of it to me uh, just would kind of, it's just something that I'd want to switch up. But other than that, I can't find anything wrong with this. I just don't think for me that I'd want to drink multiple, but I think it's definitely a really great start off the night or really great end the night, And I, but it would be something I'd want to switch up over time. All right, friends, that has been my kiss from Black Rocks Brewery in Marquette. I'll be going to Mackinac, hopefully be able to visit the UP, find more of their beer. So have you had this or do you have a favorite Black Rocks beer? Do you have some other favorite breweries you'd like to see on the channel? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you like beer and especially Michigan beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell because I'm here talking about beer, mostly Michigan beer. I'm going to start mixing it up, but I'm here talking about beer twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed and that would make me very sad. Also, I want to start incorporating your questions into these episodes so you can leave your questions on the draft therapy hotline at 224 draft 20 i'll answer them on some upcoming reviews you'll see the the number pop up on the bottom of the screen several times throughout this video so until next time i'm sean from draft therapy thanks for stopping by and remember drink craft beer support your local breweries wherever they are and most importantly don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy thanks for watching cheers